Hey guys, Jason. And today I'm going to be talking about a new coin called Stablecoin, or SBC for short. Now this coin was created on June 7, 2013, and it's really laid dormant for a long time. Now, on November 27, 2013, the developer came out and said that he was going to revamp the coin. On November 28, 2013, we saw the price skyrocket to 20 cents a stablecoin. Quite remarkable. So this coin's kind of interesting. I'm going to give you guys some basic information, and then we'll get into the more complex stuff. So this coin's designed to have 25 coins per block initially, and you know that's a <clears throat> excuse me that's a pretty good amount of coins. You know, Bitcoin started out with 50, then it went down after having to 25. So I'm not too concerned about you know how many blocks get out because the market cap and the market capitalization really determine that. So then also we have 40 second times between blocks, and there are about four or five pages of information relating to this, and this is quite interesting. Basically, they tried to figure out what was the difference because they wanted it to be perfect with speed, but also stability. And as you know, there's kind of that compromise. Speed, you know, you want a lower block time, but for you know stability, you need a higher block time. So they found that 40 seconds is a pretty ideal you know time time for their block and for their coin. So that's what they decided. I don't think it's too big a pressing issue, although 40 seconds is kind of low. You know, where Bitcoin's 10 minutes, you know, Litecoin's like two and a half minutes. 40 seconds is kind of low, but again, they're trying to emphasize on the speed while still trying to keep stability in the market. Now, it targets about every 90 blocks, which is kind of crazy because that's every hour. Now, if you know Bitcoin, you know it's like a what 14 days to retarget. So for this coin to have a one hour retarget, that's interesting. It also means that the block, you know, the people mining the blocks and getting the rewards from those are going to have to deal with a huge rapid change in you know, difficulty, which isn't necessarily bad because it keeps it a lot more stable. I think it's kind of interesting. It's an experiment to watch out for. Now, another interesting thing, and this is where it's going to get kind of controversial because people argue that Quark coin, hey, I have 245 million coins is a lot. This coin will eventually, over the course of its lifespan, which is about the next 100 years, have about 250 million coins. The one thing different from Quark coin, though, is it's going to be taking a long time, like I said, the next 100 years for this to develop. So you're going to have to wait a while to get those 250 million coins in circulation. Now, it halves every about three and a half years, or three and 3.7 years, but it's basically around 3.3 and a half years. And halving is where you go down, you know, usually by half of your reward. So like Bitcoin, you went from 50 to down to 25 reward, and that's what we call halving. Bitcoin, it's every four years. You know, this coin's about every 3.7. So I don't see too big an issue right there. I think it's kind of unique that they're doing the 3.7 years. But we'll kind of have to wait and see how that ends up turning out, you know. That's still a pretty long time. It's still like three years away before we really find out what that even does to us. So it's not too big a pressing issue as of now. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about this coin, this is where it gets kind of complex. So, you know, try to stay on to it. I'll try to keep it very simple in layman's terms. Now, this coin, the whole idea behind Stablecoin is so that you can send your coin. Uh, originally, the idea was so that you could send coins and nobody would know where they're coming from. Kind of like with Bitcoin, you know, you can track from wallet to wallet to wallet. With this coin and stablecoin, the idea was that you couldn't, you know, couldn't track it. Now, in the initial release of this coin, there was what we call a pre-mined Genesis block. Now, it's not like a pre-mined like you would think. You know, no one owns these pre-mined coins. Instead, they kind of reside in a master node, which was set to, you know, stay inside the Tor network. And this master node would hold these 21 million coins, and it's what you would call a mixer group. So, what would happen <clears throat> is you would have, you know, your coins that you want to send. And you would send through this master node, and then you know it'd mix up with all the pre-mined coins, and then this master node would export to the client that you want to send it to. So in reality, only you and the send, you and the receiver would know who those coins were you know sent to and why, where everybody else would just see this random input and output of different you know amounts from the master node. So that was really interesting. But in the re revamp from on November 27th, they got rid of this, which is kind of interesting. They got rid of the pre-mine. They basically did a hard fork. And got rid of the um, you know Genesis block that had to deal with this pre mine, and instead they have a master node still residing inside the Tor network, but instead it doesn't use pre mine coins. It just holds it up till it gets to a you know max limit, and it kind of shuffles all the coins together and sends them out. Now I've been talking to the developer back and forth for the last few days, trying to get a good you know idea of how this master node works. He did say that you know the only real issue is the master node itself. I did see him a couple emails. He didn't really um, get back to me yet for the time of this video about whether those that master code master node is held by him. 
But the fact that it's hosted in the Tor network makes me wonder, there is someone hosting that you know, master node. Now the fact is, they're not going to be able to open that node up and kind of see the transactions, but I'm sure some smart coder, if they wanted to, probably could. So while it's more secure for everyone in the network, it worries me that one person, and I don't even know if this is possible, but it worries me that there could be a possibility, might, might be, that someone that's hosting the master node inside this Tor network could find out about these coins and find out who the sender or receiver was and kind of defeat the whole purpose of this coin. Now, you know, I talk about how the master node works. They talk about how it being the only dishonest feature of the coin, which I think is kind of interesting. Before the, you know, the, the regular release, there was some issues with too many you know, vulnerabilities. And in this revamp, he kind of really fixed these issues, which makes me kind of impressed. The developer was gone for a while from the initial release. So it's good to see the developers back. He's kind of with a fury. He's you know, excited. He's really getting this coin you know, started up. It'll be interesting to see how this coin goes. Now, one thing interesting, when he did release the initial coin, he did a 12-hour pre-release, which is all you guys know, I love when they pre-announce these coins. They make sure all the clients work because it gives everybody a fair chance. And you know, it's not like, oh, hey, here's a new coin, go mine it. It's like, hey, you know, we're going to release this new coin. It comes out in the next 12 hours, get ready for it. It gives a little, the, you know, the, the issuer a little bit more credibility when it comes to that. So that impresses me. Now, he talks about how the blocks mature after 30, the, the rewards mature after 35 blocks. And one of the interesting things, I tried to understand this, it was kind of confusing. It was designed so the very first people mining it wouldn't get very good rewards. So I think the, he set it up that the first 21 hours, it would be kind of a slowly increasing block reward to get you up to the 25 reward. Now, where it confuses me is they did a hard fork. So even though they re-designed you know, designed the Genesis block and everything, they started from the middle. So the Genesis block and everything, this was all in the original release. So even though he fixed the, you know, the, the, the mixing of the 21 million or whatever, uh, yeah, 21 million you know, pre-mined coins, it doesn't fix the fact that all those coins were pre in the market. And this is where you might start asking questions. You might look and say, well, wait, you, know, you could trade on all these exchanges. You could trade stablecoin since, like, I think it was like August, September range. So people start to question, well, that doesn't make sense then. Basically, when he did this, when he revamped this coin on November 27th, he basically just did a hard fork and all the clients, you know, imagine it as you start here, you know, and this is the path you're supposed to take with the normal blockchain. Basically, he said, here, we're going to change this and everybody's going to follow this and we're going to re-go out this way. And this original fork up here just disappears. It doesn't continue. So that's interesting. It's a, you know, kind of, I'll gotta be honest, it's kind of an interesting coin. There's already 283,000 blocks which equal to about 7 million coins. So really, there's not that many coins out there. I mean, 7 million isn't really that much. I know Bitcoin has like 12 million. So it's staying below how many coins Bitcoin has. Again, I gotta be honest, the mixing feature, it's kind of interesting, it's kind of intriguing, but it also worries me, you know, I see it for people that wanna, you know, exchange coins without, you know, being tracked. It's very intriguing. Of course, you have to trust that public master node that's, you know, even though it's hidden inside the Tor network, so it's a lot more secure, it just kind of, it worries me a little bit, not as much as it should probably, but it worries me. But really, this is an interesting coin. The price has been going up, so it has that going for it. And I think it's something you're going to want to watch and see what happens with it. But also, as an ex I always talk about these altcoins are experiments. It's an experiment to see, if, you know, do people want this ability to kind of mesh up their coins so that an outsider can't track how coins went from wallet A to wallet B. They use that master node in the middle to kind of to disrupt that tracking ability. So that's quite interesting. Guys, leave me a comment about what you think about Stablecoin. I hope you enjoy the video. You know, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And, you know, I hope you enjoy the rest of my videos. Have a great night.